what they failed to mention were all the other causes. So we did the same statistics using their statistics, no one else's, and no editorializing. We found that more Americans die each year from medical errors than heart attacks or strokes or cancer. More are injured. 723,000. Dr. LePay from Harvard, considered the United States' is expert on this, said over a million. We're even conservative. And our figures and his figures do not account for anyone who has an adverse reaction at home, only in institutional settings. So the figure is much higher. Now, you would think that if you have more Americans killed each year, preventable deaths, more Americans injured, preventable uh, injuries, than all of American casualties in the First and Second World War combined in one year, that there would be a hearing, a committee, some open forum such as this, which I'm happy you're doing. Nothing. It's the 10,000 pound gorilla in the room. So if American medicine is incapable, as good as we are, and I respect what works in American medicine, it saves lives. But I'm also very much concerned about the lives it takes and does not acknowledge. So now, I've got a problem with the doctor giving me some certainty, whether it's a doctor in private practice or a doctor at the state board level, saying that, trust us. I'm saying I'm trusting the science, and the science does not show that you deserve my trust. Now, the World Health Organization, I believe, is disingenuous and plain half-truths. As of May 2009, a pandemic was defined as, quote, from the World Health Organization, an influenza pandemic occurs when a new influenza virus appears against which the human population has no immunity, resulting in epidemics worldwide with enormous numbers of deaths and illness, unquote. Now, today, it reads, quote, a disease epidemic occurs when there is, uh, are more cases of that disease than normal, a pandemic is a worldwide epidemic of a disease. An influenza pandemic may occur when a new influenza virus appears against which the human population has no immunity. Unquote. Conclusion, by the new definition, the world will always be in a tam pandemic requiring flu vaccines. This is not what the World Health Organization recently announced. Now, the efficacy. Dr. Anthony Morris, who should have been here, the former chief vaccine officer, top of authority at the FDA, quote, the producers of these vaccines know they are worthless, but they go on selling them anyway. <laughs> CDC officials have confessed, quote, influenza vaccines are the least effective immunizing agents available, especially for the elderly and the children. So when I was in Albany last week and met with a physician, I asked a simple question. Why are you giving this up first to pregnant women, children, and the senior citizens? Well, because it's going to save the senior citizens. I had five peer-reviewed studies. The only five peer-reviewed studies considered a quality showing Efficacy levels for the swine flu vaccine, zero, two percent, seven percent, nine percent. That, for the swoop of, of flu vaccine, would be considered completely statistically non-significant. Therefore, there is no protection that we can say that the flu vaccine or the swine flu vaccine confers upon senior citizens. Yet, with just the dismissal of a thought, it went out the window. Well, not when you're a senior citizen and you're more likely to have a compromised immune system. We have more illnesses in the United States today than ever before in our history. We have epidemics of immune-related illnesses. Arthritis, diabetes, cancers, lupus, fibromyalgia. These are not healthy people. And yet, in the FDA, and the, uh, they mentioned earlier Dr. Tom Jefferson, head of the vaccine field group at the Cochrane database, uh, a review of all published and unpublished efficacy evidence, and I looked at all their actual studies. I didn't take his word. They found only one safety study performed with an inactivated flu vaccine conducted back in 1976. Quote, most studies are of poor methodological quality and the impact of co-confounders is high. Quote, evidence for systemic reviews show that inactivated vaccines have little or no effect on the effects measured, unquote. Quote, immunization of young children is not lent support by our findings. We recorded no convincing evidence that vaccines can reduce death, hospital admissions, serious complications, community transmission, and influenza. Quote, in young children below the age of two, we could find no evidence that the vaccines was diff were different than a placebo. And then last week, the National Institutes of Health announced two efficacy and safety trials underway. One for pregnant women, another for healthy adults with asthma. Now, 
Look at the analysis. There are no control groups. And to me, that inactivates the quality of the study. In the exclusion criteria for pregnant women, if a pregnant woman shows a temperature spike of 100 degrees Fahrenheit or higher in 72 hours, quote, from receiving the shot, they are excluded from the study. Hello? <laughs> Hello? My God, what has happened? Has science gone crazy? The whole idea is that if a pregnant woman has a vaccine and she has a temperature, you immediately say that is a causative action and must be considered and examined. You're going to exclude her? This is a fixed study. This is absolute scientific fraud. And I will sue these bastards. Trust me, I am not a person to be played with on these issues. And I have the resources and the attorneys to do so. I'm not going to allow another one of these stupid industry studies. Now, I could go on, I'm not going to, because many of the people have touched. But here's what you didn't know. None of you knew. No one in America knows this. So this is something you should think on, sir. And I'm not holding you responsible for my thoughts or my emotions. So please do not personalize it. All right? You're here. You have to take a lot of stuff today. I'm sorry to be the bearer of my own energy, too. All right? I decided to do something I am embarrassed to say no one in the media has done. I wanted to see the efficacy, uh, excuse me, I wanted to see the character of the people that we've been supporting, much like the banks that were too big to fail and the 20 banks that were solvent and we gave all that TARP money to. Well, I looked into their background and I found that they have settled nearly a trillion dollars in lawsuits for every crime you can imagine. Now, if you or I committed the kind of crimes that these individuals committed, we would not be held up as a character of high value. Then I went to the vaccine managers, the very people we trust, the people we saved you're giving us a vaccine, we were going to accept that you've done the good science, that you have no alternative motive except to protect people, and if you make a little profit, fine. I have all their data from LexisNexis. I hired a group of young attorneys who are researchers, and I said, I want every study. We now have just a sampling, 132,000 lawsuits. Let me repeat that, sir. 132,000 lawsuits that these individuals have, have paid for fines from price fixing, falsifying scientific data, uh, skewing studies, knowing in advance that they had in unhealthy and toxic drugs and allowing them on the market. Why? Because it was considered the cost of doing business. The cost of doing business ended up causing 43,000 Americans to die from one drug, one drug, Biox. Dr. Graham of the FDA, who I interviewed, who was a, a very conscientious person, said that he went to the FDA and his own office and said, we can't allow this drug out, it is dangerous. They kept him quiet. They intimidated him, they threatened him, he's on the record saying that, and Biox came out in four years it killed 43,000 people, injured 125,000. And yet, they settled a lawsuit for $4.85 billion and their stock went up. My God. Where else than in America could you kill 43,000 people and get a raise? Am I the only person to find this rather odd that these serial criminals, these absolute criminals, are the ones that we trust with our health, an entire nation, put at risk? Now, if they had a clean record, if they'd only been shown to do good things for the public, yes, but I've got 132,000 studies, a, a, a lawsuit settled. How many do, do I not have that were settled and no amount was given? Triple that over a trillion dollars. So here we have it, people who have committed crimes. The crimes end up causing death and injury. And we give them a clean pass, a get out of jail, no character assassination, nobody goes to jail, nobody is harmed, your reputations are intact. We're in fact, we don't care what you do. We don't care how many crimes you commit. We don't care how many Americans you kill or injure. Go ahead and make us our vaccine. They say, well, we need to give them the subsidies. We need to give one billion to one company, two billion to another, four billion to another. I managed to find their actual cost of what it costs them to make the 10 most popular drugs in America. Listen carefully. This is enlightening. This is a very important part of this puzzle. Celebrex, 100 milligrams. You pay $130.27.